Yeah, sure. I mean, the the, the authorities are really between a rock and a hard place. Um, the problem, I think, is that uh, whenever you get a resurgence of inflation, um, by which you know is commonly meant rising prices, but actually is um, the falling purchasing power of the currency, uh, the establishment or the authorities are always behind the curve because they're, they're reluctant to withdraw stimulus from the economy. And the stimulus obviously comes in two forms nowadays. On the one hand, you've got um, uh, interest rates, which uh, they suppress, and uh, at the same time, um, uh, increasingly now, uh, they just print raw money into the economy, not necessarily into the economy represented by GDP, but the economy as a whole in the form of quantitative easing, which is taken up by pension funds and insurance companies and uh, basically gets into the economy uh, through their investment activities. So, um, that is something which um, they don't like to have withdrawn from them. And, uh, of course, the whole of the economic establishment has been educated in either monetarist economics or, alternatively, Keynesian economics. And from time to time, um, monetary economics is uh, perhaps better regarded as a solution or a, uh, as a means of understanding the current situation than Keynesian and vice versa. The experience of the 1970s was that um, we were all Keynesians, and then um, when inflation really became a problem, uh, we became monetarists. I mean, we saw Milton Friedman popping up on our television screens telling us wh what the solution was and so on and so forth. Um, we have a similar situation developing today. Um, certainly in this country, um, some well-known um, and long-established monetarists are now calling for um, uh, interest rates not to be raised, for um, monetary policy not to be tightened, because it is already slowing down. And according to their metrics, uh, they would uh, say that this leads us um, into a recession, particularly if the authorities, the monetary authorities, continue to um, uh, tighten uh, the monetary situation. So you've got that on the one hand. And on the other hand, you've also got the Keynesians, who um, have now completely divorced um, uh, money from uh, anything to do with inflation. They look at inflation as purely rising prices. You find that um, if you read FOMC statements about inflation, it's always about rising prices, and money is never mentioned. The quantity of money is never mentioned, which is an extraordinary thing. I mean, there is no doubt about it that money is um, uh, the factor or one of the two principal factors behind uh, changes in the purchasing power of the currency. But the other, which everybody ignores, and they ignore it because you cannot capture it statistically, is human behavior. Now, if we look back towards, uh, you know, in past episodes of high inflation, you find always that you get um, uh, resources, wealth, if you like, being taken through the inflationary process out of the producing side of the economy and being squandered um, on the government side of the economy, which actually is completely non-productive and, if anything, is just destructive of capital. Um, we had that in the 70s, and in the 70s, they called it stagflation. Um, uh, in fact, uh, there really is no such thing as stagflation, um, but uh, Keynesian economists at the time found it impossible to reconcile um, a stagnating economy with um, inflation, and so they called it stagflation and sort of rather left it at that. But the fact of the matter is that the transfer of wealth from the productive economy to the government creates, if you like, not so much um, a recession in the GDP sense, but a true um, uh, slowing down, if you like, and removal of economic progress from the part of the economy that really matters, which is the productive side. And um, the socialization of uh, people's wealth is precisely what happened in uh, communist Russia, communist China, and we know what happened there. As far as um, Western um, social democracies are concerned, it is merely a slower process towards the same destructive end. 
um, because it is not so extreme. It is not so all-encompassing. It is not so sudden. Um, but nevertheless, you can certainly see the loss of freedoms that are going with this, and that's the direction in which we're going. So coming back to the inflation story, the idea that inflation can be, uh, you know, is no longer the problem and it's going to be a recession is actually complete bunkum. The problem basically is the falling purchasing power of the currencies. That is continuing and it will accelerate further. And uh, the way in which it will be accelerated is that the human, you know, human individuals, individuals make the choices in terms of valuing currency. They're not interested in uh, transactions that have already occurred, which is what the macro um, analytic um, statistical side says. They're far more interested in what they've got in terms of liquidity, uh, in other words, cash and credit that is available to them, and the prices of the things that they are um, buying at the moment and will buy in the future. Now, if they if they think that the purchasing power of their liquidity is going down, then they will reduce their liquidity. But the problem is that the liquidity is not destroyed. It still exists. It just transfers from one person to another. So if you get people are all mass trying to reduce their overall level of liquidity, then you will find that the purchasing power of the currency goes down substantially, irrespective of its quantity. And that's the key thing to understand. That's interesting because it's not, yeah, as you point out, it's not simply, the purchasing power is not simply a matter of the dilution uh, mathematically of the, of the, of the uh, currency supply uh, through over over creation of currency, but it's actually the willingness of people to accept it and hold on to it and, and treat it as a as a unit of transaction versus try to dump it. We just uh, just from my novice perspective as a as a bullion dealer, uh, the the tenor of the callers who are calling as new clients saying, "I just sold the property. I just received an inheritance. I just." Um, uh, got retired from my old employer and I've got I have an opportunity to roll over this funds or whatever they just don't want to put large keep large funds in the bank anymore and in dollars specifically and uh, so they're trying to get them out of dollars and into something tangible into something real um, that phenomenon is part of that awakening that you're talking about I think of the populace when the populace wants to have nothing more to do with the currency which they see as a as a way to lose, if they hold on to it, something that's going to lose them for future purchasing power. Can you expand on that briefly before we move on to specific viewers' questions? Yeah, I, that's that, that's right. Um, I would also add to it that uh, I'm sure that a lot of the people who you're getting calls from are worried about the values of assets as opposed to money, as opposed to the currency, as opposed to uh, the value of the deposits in the bank and whether they're, they're indeed safe, um, because there is no doubt about it that with rising interest rates, you're going to get collapsing uh, financial asset values. And we're already seeing that, certainly. I mean, anyone who's got a portfolio of bonds and equities is sitting there wondering what the hell to do with it. Um, that's, that, I'm afraid, is where they are. 